What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey, and Friday in the stock market, we see a continuation of the bounce, and it's starting to look like the bulls are back. Today, I'll be giving you everything you need to watch to see where the market's going from here. So first up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right, so there's a lot to unpack today, so we are going to be getting into a lot of details, and I'm also going to be giving you my opinion of where we go from here. Remember, anytime I give you my opinion, it's completely speculation, because I believe we truly do have to follow the price action each and every day, and we need to have an unbiased approach of following price action, but I will still give you my opinion based on what I'm seeing and where I think we're going from here. So the first thing I wanna go over today is I do wanna show you the drawdown on SPY from the high to the low. We had a drawdown of about 14%. So remember, a stock market correction is anywhere between 10 and 15%, and typically speaking, a stock market correction is all you get. You don't typically go into a bear market just because you typically go into a bear market because you're in an economic recession. So right now we are not in an economic recession, even though that could change and we could go into an economic recession and that could send us into a further bear market. I do not think that is going to be the case. So from here, I think you can make a strong case that the S&P 500's buy ETF saw the bottom at 411, and that's why we're getting such a strong bounce. Remember, I talked about the possibility that market makers would drive this below critical support, do a stop rate, and liquidate all of the longs who had their stop losses below these support levels, and that clearly looks like exactly what's going on here. And now we're seeing very bullish looking candles closing at the high of the day and starting to see very impulsive bullish price action to the upside. So I'm going to make a strong case that we did see the bottom at SPY 411. And while I could be completely wrong, I'm going to give you a lot more reasons why I believe that's going to be the case. So the first being that we're not in economic recession, so I don't expect to see a multi-year bear market or even a bear market that's going to last more than a few months. And even if we are going into another month of bear market, we're still more than likely going to hold up above these strong support levels because that's where we see strong buying levels. And unless something changes, we are more than likely not going back down to revisit that support. Now, the other thing you can see is that the 20 simple moving average is now positively sloping and the bulls are starting to gain a lot of momentum. So when you see the bulls gaining momentum and we're not near critical resistance yet, it's more than likely going to continue to bounce from here. So I would expect to see SPY coming back up to at least retest 443, 446, or 450. The major resistance levels and the major tests I want to see are going to be getting back over this 20 simple moving average at 443 and then getting back over the 50 EMA, which is currently sitting at 449. So in the bullish scenario, we still do have a bear trap that we need to get through. So there's still going to be a pullback. So we're either going to get to the 20 simple moving average at 443 or get to the 50 EMA and our resistance trend line around 449. And then we should start to see that bear trap. That bear trap can unfold many different ways, but typically it's a three wave counter trend rally. And then from there, if we're getting back on the bull, that's when we'll get all of the bullish breakouts. Price action will start to run away and never look back. So in the near term, I expect more upside at least to get to SPY 443, but more than likely we could have enough momentum to get all the way up to 449 to 450. From there, we should get this pullback and there's no guarantee how long this pullback has to last. But if it's going to end up being a bear trap, it's more than likely going to be a deep retracement to make the bears think we're going down for the next leg lower, trap them in short positions before the market reverses and then starts ripping off faces. So in the short term, I expect more upside followed by a significant pullback that's going to be a trap. And then from there, if we did see the bottom at 411, we should see a very quick reversal and a very impulsive bull rally and that should go through the majority of March and April. So this very bullish rally could be right around the corner, but we need to see more price action before we get the confirmation, and then obviously we need confirmation of the bullish breakout. So once we get this pullback, we'll wanna see the price action breaking above this high. That'll be confirmation that the bulls are in full control, and then we should start to see that very impulsive rally. Okay, that's all of my speculation on where we're going from here. So now let's jump into the actual technical analysis and analyze the price action. So on Friday, you could see the price action is still very bullish and we're now back above the 13 EMA. And like I said before, we're starting to see a lot of positive slopes in these moving averages. So the bulls are taking over control with the momentum. You can see we still have very nice buying volume and we're seeing buying volume matching the selling volume. And on the day we hit 411, we saw very high volume buying. So the volume is looking good and we are seeing high volume buying. 
and high volume buying is usually an indication that you could have seen the bottom. Now, another thing to pay attention to is that we are still in a downtrend and we still do have a confirmed bear trend and we haven't formed a higher high just yet. So the next bullish breakout as far as higher highs go means SPY needs to close back above 447 and then all the way back above about 458. So 447 and 458 are going to be your bullish price action closes because that's going to start putting in higher highs on the daily chart. So if you want to wait for bullish confirmation, you're waiting for higher highs. But if you want to set your risk, you should be setting your risk down here right around 428 and 420. So you have strong support at 428, strong support at 420. And while I don't believe we're coming back down to 411, if we do go back down to that level, that will also be strong support. You can see on closing prices, we really only tested 420 because we closed near that support level and then bounced higher for the next close. On intraday price action, we did close the gap at 411. So there is still one more gap down there at 400, but remember there's no guarantee we have to go fill those gaps. So from here, watch those critical resistance breakout levels that will tell you you're getting bullish price action. And we will also have resistance right around 439, even though that's not going to be a major resistance at this point. Jumping over to the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, you can see we were up 1.55% on Friday. And again, we're seeing very bullish looking candles and we're still seeing very nice buying volume. So it's the possibility on the triple Qs, we did see the bottom at 318 and you can see we are closing back above 334. So we only ever got one daily close below that level. I've said it before, but I think if you start seeing consecutive closes on the triple Qs below 334, you are more than likely going to see the bear market and that's why I told you I don't think we're getting the bear market scenario. And I think that's why we're seeing such a strong bounce below that level. Now, if things start to change and on the triple Qs, the critical resistance is 352 to 353. If we get rejected from that level and start seeing impulse of selling and we break back down below that low at 318, that is very likely going to send the market into a bear market. And you should not expect to see a bull rally in the month of March. You should expect to see a continuation of the selling in a prolonged bear market. While I don't think that's the highest probability chance, you can't rule it out completely because we are still in a downtrend. So your bullish breakout levels on the triple Qs will be back above 353, making a new daily high back above 357, and then getting back over this 50 EMA, which is getting back over 363. So those will be your critical resistance, bullish breakout levels. And if you want to wait for confirmation, at least wait until the triple Qs get two consecutive closes back above 353. You can see the 20 simple moving average now does have a positive slope. So the bulls are gaining momentum here. So I would not be surprised to at least retest 353, but more than likely retest the 50 EMA before we see any more potential downside. So just like I said on SPY in the bullish scenario, you still need to expect that pullback after we hit resistance. And then once we bounce from that pullback and take out the high, that's when you should be getting very bullish. On the Dow Jones, we were up 2.47% on Friday and we did close just above that neckline that I told you we had to close above on Friday or we would have a confirmed double top on the weekly chart. So you can see the bulls did everything they needed to do to get back above that level. So now we don't have any confirmed breakdown below the neckline on a weekly chart. There's no way that was coincidence. And now you know the significance of that level because the bulls know the bears will raid the Dow Jones if we start closing below the week below 340. Now you can see the bulls did have a lot of work to do and they did open a gap below. So it is possible we do come back down to fill that gap right around 332. But again, there's no guarantee when that gap has to get filled. So your critical resistance levels to pay attention to in the Dow Jones are going to be right around 341 and 347 and the 50 EMA just below 350. The bullish breakouts will be back above about 351 and then getting all the way back above 356. And don't forget, we still do have a gap to fill at 360. So if the bulls can start breaking out, you're going to see a quick trip to fill that gap at 360. So I wouldn't completely ignore that gap. And if we do start to pull back, it's very likely we could come back down and fill that gap right around 332. And that will still be a higher low because our previous low was right around 331.5. So continue to watch the price action from here, but you can clearly see there's a lot of bullish developments in the price action, even though we still do have confirmed downtrends. And I always tell you to respect the trend. So don't be getting overly bullish during a downtrend. And there's still the possibility we need to finish out that bear trap before we get the confirmation of those bullish breakouts. On the Russell 2000, we were up 2.25% on Friday and we did close back above the 20 simple moving average. So we did get a bullish breakout back above 200. Your next bullish breakouts will be a close above 207. And then the most bullish breakout will be a close above 212. You could see that support level at 191 did hold up. But if we do lose that support level at 191, we're more than likely heading to 170 with support on the way there at 183. Downside support in the Russell is now at 200 and 197. 
and you now know your bullish breakout levels. So if you want to wait for bullish confirmation, wait until we close above those levels. On the ARK ETF, we were up 3.35% on Friday and we did close back above the 5 EMA and we're back above this level at 64 yet again. And now we need bullish confirmation with a close back above 71 and then closing back above 78. If we can get back above 78, the ARK ETF will be looking very bullish. And I told you time and time again, it's possible the bottom on this ETF was at $60. But if we do lose that support level, we're still in a confirmed bear market. We're still in a confirmed downtrend. So we could still continue to trend towards 50. However, if this level at 60 never breaks down and we start getting the bullish breakout above 78, then we more than likely saw the bottom and this ETF could see a very bullish rally because it's extremely beaten up. On the VIX, we were down over 9% on Friday and we did close back below the 5 EMA, but we still have the bull trend and the VIX is still above 26. So this is still going to be a very volatile market and there's still going to be plenty of traps for bears and bulls alike. There's no way that with the VIX this elevated, we're just going to have a smooth ride higher until we see the VIX getting back down below 24 and the confirmation of the bull market will be when the VIX closes below 20. So expect there to be plenty of volatility out there. So you still need to be cautious and you still need to protect yourself. On Bitcoin, we're currently down about a quarter percent. We see Bitcoin trading at 39,000 and we still do have the bear trend and we are still in a bear market. From here, the bullish breakouts on Bitcoin will be back above 41,500 and then closing back above 46,000. I wouldn't be getting bullish on Bitcoin while it's in a confirmed downtrend. So wait for the bullish confirmation and the break above 46,000. To the downside, you're looking for support right around 37,000. 35,000 and below 35,000, we're going back down to 30,000. And if we lose that support, we're more than likely going back down to 20,000. On Nvidia stock, we were up 1.72% on Friday and we did get back up to the 13 EMA and we now have a positively sloping 20 simple moving average. Your next bullish breakouts will be back above 246, back above about 256, and then back above 271. The next time we see Nvidia breaking out above about 270, that is going to be a very bullish development because it will look like we had a double bottom look, which means we could see Nvidia going all the way back up into the low 300s. So watch Nvidia very closely here because if we do get confirmation of the bullish breakout, we should easily see Nvidia going back into another bull market. To the downside, watch for support at 236, 224, and 209. On Tesla stock, we were up 1.14% on Friday and we did fail to close back above the 5 EMA and we still very clearly have a bear trend and more than likely Tesla is still going into a prolonged bear market. Remember that Tesla has this double top look, the longer it stays below 900, the more likely it's trending down towards about 592. We hit the first price target at 709 and we did bounce, but we don't have any bullish breakthroughs and we still can't even close back above the 5 EMA. So resistance at this point for Tesla is right around 827, 860 and our 20 simple moving average at 879. And if we lose the support level at 792 and close below 762, we should at least retest the 700 levels. And if that support level fails, you're going to see a very quick trip down to 592. Once we hit 592, that could be the bottom and that could be the next best buying opportunity. So as long as Tesla has the bear trend, I would expect to see it trending towards 592 and I would not be getting bullish until it at least gets close to that price target and start seeing high volume buying. On Apple stock, we were up 1.3% on Friday and we did close back above the 5 EMA and we still have a very positively sloping 20 simple moving average. So the next bullish breakout on Apple stock will be a close back above 168 and then a close back above 171. If we can see Apple stock getting back above 171, we should easily regain the bull trend and then we can start trending higher towards resistance at 176 and 182. To the downside, look for support at 162, 160, 157, and 153. If we break back below 160, we're more than likely going into a bear trend and we should see Apple continuing to trend lower. On the financial sector, we were up 3.22% on Friday and we can see a very bullish candle closing back above the 5 EMA and gapping above the previous gap. So we do have a very impulsive bullish rally here. The next resistance to pay attention to will be right here at the 50 EMA. The industrial sector was up 2.39% on Friday and it looks like we're going back up to retest our resistance trendline. Don't forget, we still do have a gap way up there to fill at 106. The healthcare sector was up 3.06% on Friday, closing back above the 20 simple moving average and getting very close to getting the bullish breakout look. Above the bullish breakout, look for the gap fill above at 141. The energy sector was up 2.64% on Friday and closed back above all the moving averages, so we could regain the bull trend from here. Remember, this could be a bull trap because we did see the energy sector starting to roll over, so I wouldn't be getting overly bullish until it can at least close back above the previous high. If we start to lose support and go into a bear trend, look for the gap fills below. 
So jumping back over the S&P 500, I gave you a lot of information to unpack today and all you need to do from here is watch the critical levels and pay attention to the price action. I can't stress it enough that you shouldn't be getting overly bearish after we saw the full-blown correction in the magnitude of the 14% drop in SPY. And usually if we're going into a prolonged bear market, it's going to be during an economic recession. So use that information however you want to. But remember to stay objective, still respect the downtrend, and don't ignore the fact that we're seeing huge volume buying after going through a full-blown correction. I still think 2022 is going to be a bull market, and I still think we're going to close positive for the year. So if that is going to end up being true, these are still great buying opportunities and still great levels to set your risk. Do whatever fits your risk management and follow your plan and stay consistent. And if you don't have a trading plan and you're not using risk management, this should have been a very important learning lesson for you to take this more seriously because you never know when the stock market can get volatile and you never know exactly what the future holds. Your trading plan should be very robust and you need to be very consistent to guarantee that you have consistent results and that way you know exactly what to fix if something's not going right. Also, don't forget that I do have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm-driven trade alert service that only trades the ETF TQQ and sends all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. With all of this market volatility in a brand new trading year, I think now is the best time to be a bank member. You can find out all of the information about Bank Trade Alerts and how to subscribe by clicking on the link in the description of the video. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I do intraday updates and analysis and bring new trade ideas to you weekly. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, you can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link below. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.